Hi everyone, I'm Carmen, the Community Coach, and today I want to talk about a tool that I found online that I think is the future of community voting, Web3. I'm super excited about it. Let's go. Okay, so the tool today that I'm going to be talking about is called Snapshot, and I am seeing hundreds of DAOs and NFT communities start to use this platform as a way for their members to vote on proposals and future community initiatives online. It's fully decentralized, which is amazing. It's free, so it doesn't cost anything for the organizer or the member to vote. It is not on chain, but it's still fully accountable in terms of seeing who has voted, how many votes are tallied, everything is super transparent. So with that in mind, let me show you what this looks like. We have Snapshot's homepage, and first up, it just shows a ton of different NFT collections and DAOs and who uses Snapshot. You can see Decentraland is on here, you guys. I mean, Rarible's here. We have Cybercoms I've seen. Yeah, there is tons of spaces that I'm sure you will probably recognize the names of some of these. ENS is on here and Sushi, Gitcoin, Uniswap. All right, I don't need to keep going on. But there's a lot of spaces that are using Snapshot. So I'm really excited for the future potential of this tool. Let's go and take a look at Mutant Cats DAO and see what they've been up to. So here is the Mutant Cats DAO space and you can see that they currently have two active proposals. These are active proposals that they want the community members to vote on currently. They're currently open. So for instance, they've got, should we rescue meta beers by buying out their DAO vault? <laughs> and so let's have a look at that. All right, so you can see here that when you click on their proposal, they have more details, the context and description. They've even got a share button here, which I think is pretty cool. And then the benefits as well. So what is the reason behind this proposal? What is the budget that's required? And then here it's really simple. You can cast your vote. Now you do need to connect your wallet to go ahead and cast your vote, which is very important because you just don't want anybody voting here. You wanna make sure that the people that are voting are actually members of the Mutant Cats DAO. And there's ways to ensure that that is the case. And then you can see here, like I mentioned, full transparency. So gotta love Web3. You can see the number of votes here. We have 335 people have voted already. And you can also see how they voted. So again, full transparency here on the top right, you've got information, the author of the proposal. Again, I was talking full transparency the voting system. Now, the great thing about this tool is that there are actually different types of voting system depending on what you want. And that's a huge win for this platform. I mean, you don't have to choose just the simple single choice voting, which means one vote per token or one vote per person. You can actually go down a way more complicated route. Maybe you want to assign more votes to people that have engaged more in the community. I want to talk about some of the other ways to consider calculating votes because there are flaws and inequities in just using the simple voting model. Single users could cast multiple votes or token hoarding whales can disproportionately sway future proposals to outcomes. You have issues with pump and dumps and individuals just acquiring a large number of tokens in a short period of time just to disproportionately affect a single proposal. And that's not great. The good news is there's something called reputation based voting. And it's likely that this is going to become the standard in DAOs and Web3 communities moving forward. The news is a snapshot has partnered with Orange Protocol and they're working on something called Portable Reputation, which as I mentioned, I think this is going to become the standard in DAOs and Web3 communities moving forward. So the problem is currently voting power is tied to token holders, which requires owning capital. And that's the, the single simple voting methods that have been used traditionally. But by partnering with Orange Protocol, Snapshot's actually looking to implement this concept of reputation based voting measures. Now with this, what will happen is the most loyal and active DAO contributors will have the biggest say instead of the wealthiest or the people that just simply hold the most tokens. So in DAOs, reputation is everything. You don't have middlemen and centralized governance. So the contributions and engagement of individuals in the community 
should carry more weight as projects and communities evolve. So Snapshot has DAO voting data sets with the ability to produce customizable reputation reports. And this will create voting structures that more accurately reflect the sentiment of the community. So you can boost the reputation of users and create these different data sets. And by integrating the orange scores into snapshots, DAOs will be able to weigh votes based on reputation rather than the traditional just number of token holdings. So instead of the wealth dictating who has the most say, a member's track record and resume of engagement in multiple DAOs will give them a bigger say, promoting a higher form of democracy than we've ever seen before. Reputation-based voting on Snapshot could also take into account the length of time that users have held the specific voting. So that will get rid of the pump and dump or the individuals that are just acquiring the number of tokens in a short-term lifespan to disproportionately affect a single proposal. You also have this concept of quadratic voting, and this is where a person's voting weight is increased by not only how many tokens they hold, but how many others are voting in the same direction. So for example, you could have 100 voting tokens from 10 different individuals collectively. Maybe they voted in one direction and this will actually be greater in weighting than 100 voting tokens from one individual. So you have all these different ways of looking at voting instead of just looking at the traditional means where you know one voting token equals one voting right. You have other ways to look at approaching DAOs and Web3 communities moving forward. And I'm really, really excited about this because it's so important when we're looking at producing a more equitable outcome for communities moving forward. There's a whole article about this. I'm going to put the link in the description below because I think it's really, really important and relevant to anyone in the DAO and NFT space who's collecting votes. I'm really excited to see this partnership moving forward between Snapshot and Orange Protocol to make crypto more democratic. So definitely give that a read. How cool is that? You can actually make that happen. Now let's go back. You can also see all the previous proposals. So what have people voted on before? You can see the actual results of these proposals. So for instance, I can see here, the members have approved purchasing land in the sandbox. It's really interesting to see for a lot of the results, I've noticed that the majority wins. And I think that that could be because you can actually see how the votes are tallying up over time. And people generally will vote with a the crowd. They won't vote against the crowd. It's generally what happens. I love to be able to have the ability to hide the results until after you voted. I think that could be really interesting. I don't know whether that's in the works, but super early in the game here, there's still ways to even contribute to this platform. I personally would love to see that added and you know, maybe that will become a feature in future. I don't know, to be honest, I'm not complaining because I think the full transparency is super important in the Web3 system and or the Web3 ecosystem, I should say. So, you know, I'm going to take a look at one more. The Doodles uh, is actually an NFT collection. So I think it's important to note that it's not just DAOs that are using Snapshot. It's also NFT collections. Now, something that I really love about this Snapshot platform is that you can connect POAPs to Snapshot. So if you're not sure what a POAP is, it's a digital badge. I talked about it in my previous video. I will link that below just in case you want to watch that video. But here you can see an example. This is actually Sushi's page or Sushi Space on Snapshot. They've got a proposal here. And as you can see, if you vote, you actually can get this POAP. And that's a digital badge, it's an NFT. Maybe one day that's worth something, but at the very least, it's social proof that you voted. And like you think about it, there's like, it goes all the way back in the day when you used to get like I voted badges that you could wear on your t-shirt. So I think it's really cool that you can connect it behind the scenes. It's all automatic. And if I was a Sushi member and I voted, I would be able to claim 
that poll out. All right, so enough about that. Now let's pretend that you're super interested in this and you wanna go ahead and get started. How do you get started? The way to get started is, to be honest, go to their docs, because their docs are super comprehensive and I highly recommend before you do, go ahead and create your own space in Snapshot and create proposals for members to vote on. Go through their docs. It's really comprehensive, but it's simple, it's straightforward, and it will really help you understand the tool better and how to get started. What is a space? What do you have to do before creating your space? They actually recommend that you have your own ENS domain name, which is just think of it as like the Ethereum name service. It's just your way of getting a .eth domain name and you can actually connect that domain to Snapshot and that's how you can get started with creating your own space and getting started with this tool. The great thing is you can fully customize your space, you can add a skin, you can add your customized domain and most importantly you have to assign uh, roles to the space so you need to have admins, controllers, members obviously who can post proposals regardless of their voting power. So this just talks you through the different types. Again, this is all open source so you know don't expect this to be like Facebook. <laughs> it's not, we're still early here but at the same time there are hundreds of DAOs and NFT communities that are using this tool. So know that you are in good company. And yeah, and here we go. Here's how you create a proposal. So first thing you gotta do is go to your pro project space, click on connect wallet. And then here you can see the ability to create a new proposal. You have to choose the voting type. And the best thing about this is there are different types of voting, like I mentioned. It gives you a lot of power as a admin to decide how do you want votes collected. It's like the dream. It's like, you know, you're setting up your own country and how do you want those votes calculated? Um, you may need to get a developer to help you, by the way, because there are different ways to calculate the votes, for instance, and when you're creating a new strategy, you're gonna see that their docs, they have things like this, and that may scare a lot of people away, but to be honest, I think if you've got somebody that's techie, they're gonna be able to go through these steps. It's pretty straightforward and get yourself sorted with creating new proposals and the way to actually calculate the votes. Like I mentioned, you can connect POAPs. It goes through how to do that. You can create a plugin as well. So again, it goes through that and some examples of doing that. Again, this is like really techie stuff. We don't really need to go through that. The cool thing is, is that you can connect a Discord bot with a Snapshot, which is very important because at the end of the day, you want your community to vote. Well, you need to actually connect it with your community platform. But here you've got, you know, a few examples of some bots and then you can find all the FAQs. So like I mentioned, we're early on this. That means that there's a whole bunch of people that, you know, obviously have run through the platform. They may have got some issues with deploying their own proposals, etc., or they have their own questions. So hopefully this doc is going to help you if you've got a question. Hopefully it's already been answered before. But there you have it. There's uh, an example of a platform that hopefully will be the future of community voting in Web3. It's called Snapshot. I'm going to list the links below. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. If you have, please make sure to like and subscribe. My channel is new. I am trying to build up more content that's useful for you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.